Great things will happen. The enemy is very stupid. He has done it and done it and done it. And nothing he will do, he will succeed. World Redemption Power Ministries presents Holy Ghost Convention Theme Your Time to Recover All 1st Samuel Chapter 30 Verse 18 The Venue is the Church Auditorium Adjacent St. Anthony School South of Doko Sakaman With your host Prophet Peter Kodusego General Overseer Date is from the 16th to the 19th of December 2021 Time 5.30pm to 8.30pm each night And Sunday 6.30am to 11am Song Ministration by Fire Voices and Power Voices. For more details, please call 0555-241-303 or 0205-840-459. Remember, it's starting from the 16th to the 19th of December 2021. Come and seek the face of God for your divine recovery. You may say that you are a human being made in Ghana. Human being made in Ghana. But you are not a human being made in Ghana. You are a supernatural being made by God onto the earth. Come and say, I am not ordinary. The name is power. The name is great. The name is glory. The name is Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning, we thank God. And I'm here to pray with you. And we will discuss the word of the Lord this morning. We thank and bless you, Holy Spirit, being in control and help us know your word much better so that we increase in faith and then actively work under you in your presence. And I pray, God, make us and help us that through your word we become faithful stewards and faithful managers to manage whatever authority you may give to us or power or anointing or any other assignment you may give to us to perform that we will do it well not to be be like a man a priestess but do it to praise you even as you are with us always even to the end of the world your way says in Matthew 29 and 20 say and lo i will be with you even to the end of the age i bless you and thank you that you are with us always in jesus name amen so please good morning to you and we are here to discuss god's word i believe you are ready with your book with your pen with your bible to go through god's word that is a prophetic bible studies and i believe you will learn so much and i believe you are really in, improving in your in your work with god and things are changing for you and your faith is going into a new dimension i'm here in the name of jesus christ to share god's word and what i'm to share with you is about who is the faithful and wise manager who is the faithful and wise manager so we are going to share this word and i believe you will learn so much and it's all about when god gives you assignment when god gives you a vision when god tells you to do something for him already he has given you the grace the talent the technical know-how to be able to do it and then as you do more anointing will come upon you more grace will come upon you to be able to do it effectively to glorify his holy name anything that god gives to us he doesn't leave us alone because he already abides in us the father the son and the holy spirit they all live in our bible says they have the abode in us so god is always with us like a man where god is with us so so whatever we are doing we need to be consciously know that god who lives in us does the work like jesus said it in the book of john he said the father who lives in him does the work he did not even take the glory and honor for himself as he came on earth and he was ministering to many millions of people in his days he said the father who lives in him did the work but nobody saw the father but he knew the father he said he had been with the father the father was in heaven and was also in him he said he came from somewhere from heaven he said well, his kingdom was great he kept talking about his kingdom so you must know that we have also been translated in Colossians 1 13 from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ and Andre. and with that kingdom we've been given everything that we need to have to be able to propagating the gospel of our lord and savior jesus christ or any assignment that god has given to you either within the church or out of the church we must follow suit so that in the end it becomes a blessing for us and for the journey of faithfulness in jesus much in them so let's hear god's word and i believe that will also trigger more understanding and more insight about god's word for our lives to follow luke chapter 12 verse 41 to 48 and profile i read Peter said, Lord, are you addressing this parable to us 
disciples or to everyone else as well. Parable of the faithful steward. The Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward of the state, whom his master will put in charge over his household, to give his servants their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed, happy, prosperous to be admired is that servant whom his master finds so doing when he arrives. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is taking his time in coming and begins to be the servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a praise with the unbelievers and that servant who knew his master's will and yet did not yet ready or act in accord with his will would be beaten with many lashes of the whip but the one who did not know it and did things worthy of a beating will receive only a few lashes from everyone to whom much has been given much will be required and to whom they entrusted much of him they will ask all the more again from everyone to whom much has been given much will be required and to whom they entrusted much of him they will ask all the more again from everyone to whom much has been given much will be required and to whom they entrusted much of him they will ask all the more thou says god's word amen so it is talking about being steward over the things that god has entrusted in your hands or put it on your care like maybe this man standing here is a video man he does it for me in the house and also in the church. The church has about four cameras. And then the house has about two cameras, but we are using only the main one here. And he does all the editings of the house and the church, for example. He does it so much, if, like okay, if, if the church is going to praise TV or any other, YouTube or Facebook, he does, does so many things, the adverts and for the program, he does it because he has gone to school, he's, he's talented or gifted, he was born with it, and he has computer capacity to be able to do, he's doing his national service on top. So such a person, he has been faithful then this, and he does it naturally, he doesn't take any salary from the church, but he does it wholeheartedly, and I believe such a person, God will bless him, he'll live longer, he'll be prosperous, he'll break through and break forth in every area, as younger as he is, he's doing this heavy duty work. Also with the rest of the precious saints in the ministry, a lot of you are doing so well. They, I have decades who are doing so well in the ministry and few others. I have decades who are, all of them are doing so well in the ministry, going here, going there, working in the church and out of the church tirelessly. And also I have few people or I have raised some new decades in the ministry. They are also doing so well, working hard, they love the Lord and love the work of God so much. And I've been watching them as humanly as I am. I'm praised of what they have done for God many years now. And these are people that God can entrust them with more, more assignment. And, and they also God may bless them more than they are expected. And also I see entire members also being committed to the Great Commission, uh, donating, supporting, doing this and that. Also doing in their own capacity and ability or in, in their realm doing the work of God. I can give commentation, like account about many of them like that, and I really thank God for their commitment and their love for God first, and also toward the work of God. The work of God does not belong to a head pastor or whoever. The work of God is the work of God. It's not the work of man or the work of head pastor or whatever. And Bible says, who is the faithful and wise manager? God is requesting those who will be faithful and then they also become wise managers. Some are faithful, but they are not wise managers. They can't manage the affairs and things that God may give them. They cannot manage their time, manage their strength, manage their energy, manage their anointing, manage their resources, manage their math, manage anything that God entrusts to them. They can never even be good managers, you see that. that. And then they do things half exactly 
to they can abuse, disuse, and uh, misuse anything that God entrusts to them. And that is only a good management, and they can never go on in life, and it becomes a curse on them because they're not doing the will of the Lord. Who is the faithful and wise manager? So, uh, subtopic is giving much. Much is required. He who much is given, much is required. He who little is given, little is required in that order, in, in my own understanding. So number one, God commands you to be a faithful and wise manager. Whatever God has given to you to do, you don't just become a leader just for being a leader sake so that you can rule. So your name will come on TV or Albert or something. You forget about that one. It's the work you focus upon. It does not become pompous, arrogant because now your name is being mentioned everywhere. But who is helping you? It is Jesus who is shining in you. It's not you shining. It is Jesus who is working through you and through you and through you to do his work and for you as well. So God commands you to be a faithful and wise manager. Number two, are you faithful with little things? That is where the problem is. They, they, many people in ministry are looking for super, for yamboyant breasts, big, big breakthrough, elephant breakthroughs, and the chimpanzee breakthrough, and the gorilla breakthroughs, and also giraffe breakthrough. And they are not getting it. But meanwhile, God has started testing them with something little they have to be faithful with. They are not even being faithful with the little that God has, God has entrusted in their hands. But they are looking up to God for bigger, bigger things. So they abuse the small things that God has given to them to do in the church or out of the church and looking up to God for bigger things where they can't even handle it. Even if you can't even do the, this small, small things. When you are raised even in the church, when you are asked to even to preach in the church, can you preach? Can you preach in a church if you need because you can't do something? Preaching is not about shouting. Preaching is bringing out solutions about our lives. Preaching is about sharing the faith, your, your faith experience with the brethren. Preaching is about feeding other saints of something you read in the Bible that benefited you and you are shadow with them. Preaching is about and challenging your brother and sister that this is what you did, you broke through. So you, they could also do this and that they will break through if they wanted to enhancing the progress that God has started giving to them, etc. So are you faithful with little things? If you're not faithful with little things, there's no way God could graduate you and give you something bigger in the future. Hallelujah. Number three, be faithful and wise in everything. Not being faithful in something here and here you are doing well and here you are not doing well. You should be faithful in all and all one whole normal. Faithful is he who has called us, who also will do it. That is a different thing. But if he's faithful, we must also remain faithful. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 7, 2 to 9, it says, it says, We love God because he first loved us. So if God has loved us, there's love of God in us. We must also try to practically show the love of God to each other or to toward him or toward his work. You should have because God has loved us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believed him should not perish but have a everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. In 1 John 3, 16 to 17. So he has also died for us and shown his love and died. He has demonstrated his love. So was that in, in that wise we were yes sinners, that, that Christ died for us in Romans 5 verse 8. Hallelujah. So God loves us so much and you, we must also have the love to love him, have the love to love his work, have the love to do his will. That is, that is the essence of living for Jesus on the earth. To do his will to the kingdom come, not only per se, coming to church because of your own benefit, own benefit, you get a blessing, you wanted more, God does uh, perform a miracle in your life and you wanted more, and you are ignoring the souls who are dying and perishing. Then you are a demon, you are a monster. You don't want the work of God to progress and to advance. You don't understand even who you are. You are in there to, to, to do, give me, give me, give me, give me prayer. You are praying for God to give it to you, but you are not to. So this time God cannot surprise. Why? Because you need to do what is right. And practically God himself will give you what you need in your own life. So be faithful and wise in everything. So you can be faithful without being wise. You can be wise without being faithful. Vice versa. You see that? So number four, your faithfulness will produce an end time reward for you. God is watching. One day, one day, what, what, what I have been doing for many years. God, I didn't know that one day I could be in such a house or God could give me all these cars. 
or oh, God could bless me with this and that, money and many, many other things, or an anointing. I have determined to be faithful to God. Whether he blesses me, he doesn't bless me. It's a natural thing with me because uh, there's no any other way. In Jesus, there's no any second part. A shortcut to get to where you are going. In Christ, there is no any other way apart from what he has put before that in John 14, verse 6. He said, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one go to the Father except through him. No one goes to the Father except by him. So I've chosen to follow him to the end. What I'm fruitful, I'm not fruitful. I am blessed. I progress. I don't progress. I get it. I know as God is in me and I live in him, he also will one day meet all my needs. After he has met my, my needs, that doesn't mean that I should sit down and abandon him and as well because I use him to get what I want and abandon. What routines can never last for a very long time? What routines can last for a very long time? Even if 100 years, it can spoil. So be faithful and wise in everything. And number four, your faithfulness will produce an end time reward for you. Number five, your faithfulness to the Lord who puts you in charge of bigger visions and blessings. That is the challenge. People don't want to strive. They don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to go through. They don't want to allow God to prepare them by going through. They don't want to serve under a minister. They want to become like the minister himself. So they leave the church. They begin their churches. They also open up a church. It's easy to open up a church, but did God tell you to establish a church? You have been on that, that minister because you are not allowed to preach and preach and preach and preach. This time, then you also separate yourself and you're doing that. That's nonsense. You won't go anywhere because you have to serve under God and serve under that minister. That was your calling. Your faithfulness to the Lord will put you in charge of bigger visions and blessings. That is what God has done in my life. And, and I know he'll do more. So I'm still serving God, serving the people, always at church, praying at home, fasting once a month, reading my Bible, praying more than three hours a day, praying, 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 praying. All is about him. So if the breakthrough comes for the church, it's for the church. You see, the ministry even I'm in, it's all about Jesus. I'm not in competition with anybody, whether my ministry or church as a, a God's a property. I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm doing what God has asked me to do. I want that to remain faithful to him till the kingdom comes. I don't have anything to say, to complain, say, Lord, it's too, too, uh, you, you have delayed in blessing me, in honoring me. Let foolish ones say that, oh, prefer to go all these years. Nonsense. But I have never stolen. I have never fornicated. And I will never be God forbid. That one, no one will look at it. You see like that? So the worthy standard, people will approve you when physically you, you are doing this. But it is not by mind, nor by power. But my spirit says the Lord, we must remain faithful to him, whether we are blessed or not blessed, faithful and wise and being manageable of whatever God entrusts into our own hands. That's a blessing. Hallelujah. And so, uh, number six, the lack of faithfulness will produce everlasting poverty. So if you are not faithful, Today and tomorrow, today you are faithful, tomorrow you are not faithful, you don't know that they are. Your end will come, you may live all right, but uh, you end up by being poor. Bible says, if you wanted to learn, go to the aunt and learn in the book of Proverbs. They go to the aunt and learn from the aunt if you wanted to be a wise person. So being wise is not to learn from if you, any minister, any man of God, is to go to the aunt and study their character, how they do their things, and you learn. You get wisdom out of that so they can also be a, a manager by your own self. Hallelujah. So the lack of faithfulness will produce everlasting Property. Number seven, the lack of faithfulness will delete your position and opportunities. Uh, so whatever God entrusts into your hands, if you are not faithful, God will take it from you. When God takes it from you, you can never have it again. He will give it to your neighbor. Uh, one guy was owing a king, a, a, a ruler somewhere in the stories of Jesus, the parable. And then the owner or, of the vineyard or, or the king or the ruler for, I mean, forgave him and then gave the money back to him. Did not take him to prison. But when he came out, he was also, somebody also was also owing him with a little money. And later he had the truth of the person and then he beat him and then jailed him. So people went and told the one eh, that he, he was owing him, big one. And said, ah, me, I'm a very rich person. You are owing him big money. I've even forgiven you and that's you that money. And somebody owes you a little money. You have jailed him. Till he paid. Bible says, I said, he had the truth to pay him that money. Bible says, they told him, the main person, the first person, and they jailed him life. They put him into jail life. They jailed him life. Why? That is how the situation is. When God gives you a job, 
Today you can breath God. You can breath even human beings. Mm, I can't do the video. And me, me alone, me alone. For example, I can't, I can't, I can't. But, but nobody is like to, to do it. You should make it your, your call. I mean, your, your ministry. Something that God has called you to do. And it's God, oh, well, today you may not know the benefit you may get from God out of this. But in the near future, you, you would be glad that we gave you that job and you uh, uh, faithfully serve God and serve us and serve the church and serve people who have been watching our live streams through Edgerton here and there. And people will not be faithful. So the lack of faithfulness will delete your position and opportunities. You will never have that level again, that uh, position again. You never have that opportunity again because as God has taken it from you, you can never have it again everywhere in the whole world because you see we serve to go up and as we serve to go up if you don't still remain faithful as you go up you cannot go up 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 again you do it. when you are brought down you can never go up again you can never go up again so it's about service through that service you became look at the 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 eunuch that went up to jerusalem to serve was in the challenge and they have castrated him he can't sleep with the woman to have a baby and he's been baffling the queen and they got traded him in the bible this and he was an accountant to the queen but every year he goes up into jerusalem to the world to worship and he was coming back to africa in the child so his his, his boys were riding him he was at the back and then he was reading the book of Isaiah. you see and then god let philip appear from somewhere and do what and then ministered to him why he had been a very great servant he needed another help eh, to go to another dimension when you serve like this he, he have been castrated of which he allowed and he's paid to buy for a queen and do so many things for a woman and he had the money and look at that but he was also a worshiper unto god so everybody is a servant to god and in many ways we are all servants of god and servants to even human beings sometimes servants we have to serve. We have to calm down. We should not become. Um, we, we are not. Who gave us the gift? It's God. What I, I'm here as a prophet. Who gave me the gift? It was God. So why don't I use the gift to serve His people and also serve Him? One, Him, two, His people. Because we minister to God in prayer every day, and then we minister to His people when the time comes, church activities, and then also we also allow the Holy Ghost to, do it, to minister to us. That is how we, we do things. The lack of faithfulness will delete your position and what opportunities in last one eight it is time to be a wise servant. It is time to be a wise servant. Without being wise servant, you can never remain also faithful because wisdom will give you the guarantee to remain calm under his authority though. You are also going through or lacking something. But because assignment is assignment, and you are to do it because God Almighty has commanded you, you have to obey fully and do it. If you don't obey, God will take you out and then he will repress you. And the Bible says that uh, Saul was so faithful. So God took the kingdom from him. Eh? When he turned the prophet garment, he says, it is not God, even God had wanted to take the, the kingdom from him. But earlier, later on, it was who? But for someone who said, now the kingdom has been taken from you, giving it to your neighbor. That, that sentence, that phrase, it was a professor who declared because he knew the mind of God about the man and his behavior, go and kill America, anything that the prophet would tell you. There are people today even in the church, God may speak his direction, they will not even, because they are not in the spirit. Go here, buy here, marry here, do this, some will not obey. Because why? They are following their senses to serve the Lord. Meanwhile, what God told me or told you to tell them, it was true, but they don't know the mind of God. The professor Samuel did well and he said, I should have told my, my government, the kingdom also well, because he really vexed the prophet, old time prophet, and maybe he was old and he was, uh, he was not having enough money to, uh, you you'd see his garment. look at that. So you could be, part of him could be naked. And he said, the kingdom have been taken from you, give it to your neighbor, that's anger. When God takes it from you and gives it to another person, you can never look I look at you in the camera. You can never have it again. It is time to remain humble and serve under that ministry, serve that man of God, woman of God, serve the church, serve the members, serve God on top and be humble because your body is a clay. You are naked. Today you are dead. Today they will bury you. When you are buried, your spirit will leave your body. You can go to hell or heaven. Decide to humble yourself because you are nothing. Somebody gave birth to you. You are nothing. 
Humble yourself so that you become a better person, like a eunuch who was in the Charlotte and Philip was brought by God by transportation of, of, of the Holy Ghost and he came and released to him in the desert. Humble yourself so that God may appear to you alone and speak to you or send people to come to your aid. Hallelujah. May the Lord be with you and show your seat this morning and your life will never be the same again. May God bless. I know you have learned words of wisdom to remain wise and faithful, faithful and wise servant to God all the way. I know that as we are entering into a, a new year, your life will never be the same again because these are things that will help you to lay a good foundation about your life, to make sure that, that you can't take God for granted and the things of God for granted because it's a privilege and honor to do whatever God has by privilege given to you to do. Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous new year. Have a good day. Amen. World Redemption Power Ministries presents Holy Ghost Convention Theme Your Time to Recover All 1st Samuel Chapter 30 Verse 18 The Venue is the Church Auditorium Adjacent St. Anthony School South of Doko Sakaman With your host Prophet Peter Kodusego General Overseer Date is from the 16th to the 19th of December 2021 Time 5.30pm to 8.30pm each night And Sunday 6.30am to 11am Song Ministration by Fire Voices and Power Voices. For more details, please call 0555-241-303 or 0205-840-459. Remember, it's starting from the 16th to the 19th of December 2021. Come and seek the face of God for your divine recovery. You may say that you are a human being made in Ghana. Human being made in Ghana. But you are not a human being made in Ghana. You are a supernatural being made by God onto the earth. Come and say, I am not ordinary. We trust you have been blessed by today's prophetic Bible study. We encourage you to take Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. So, kindly pray with me. O oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Word of God says in Acts 2 verse 21, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart, to be the Lord of my life. I receive everlasting life or eternal life into my spirit and according to the word of God which says in Romans 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead shall be saved I declare that I am saved I am born again I am a child of God and I now have Jesus Christ dwelling in me and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In 1 John 4 verse 4. Now from today, I walk in the consciousness of my new life in Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Congratulations. You are now an official child of God. Today, God has delivered your enemies into your hands. Arise and shine. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. But God's glory and God's... You are invited to join the General Overseer, Prophet Peter Kojosegu, as he directs our path to God's kingdom. On Praise TV Fridays, 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can also join us at our church auditorium at South Odoko, adjacent St. Anthony School, Sakaman. On Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. 
Last Friday of every month, half night, and Sunday service 6 30 a.m. to 11 a.m. For more details, please call 0555 241 303 or 0205 840 459. Worship with us for a huge breakthrough and transformation in your life.